So when it comes to building certain kinds of props, uh, every artist has their own sort of nightmare scenario. And for me, it's piles of cloth, or it was until I discovered this new workflow. Um, you know, recently, I've been learning some new applications, and you know, I thought I would walk you through how I handle this sort of situation these days. Now, the workflow that I'm currently using, or have been recently, is to use Marvelous Designer to sim out the cloth, you know, and make it look nice and use Houdini to generate the low poly mesh for me. Now we're not going to get into a really deep tutorial on either one of these, but I just wanted to show the workflow for the most part and show you what's possible. Now, yes, these programs cost, cost more money, but you know, when it comes to this sort of thing, I think you have to weigh it against your time, you know, especially if you're a freelancer, like how much is your time worth? Is a license of Houdini going to save you more money than it costs? Yeah, very likely it will. You know, and the same with Marvelous Designer. I cannot get cloth hand sculpted or otherwise you know, to look as good as it does coming out of Marvelous Designer. So that is absolutely worth the money because I can deliver higher quality work to my clients. So anyway, uh, we're gonna jump into Marvelous Designer. I'm gonna show you how I make pillows. Uh, you know, uh, kind of as a mini tutorial. Uh, we're gonna pile them up and then we're gonna use Houdini to low poly it and then we'll bake it off in Modo and all should be good. Let's dive in. Okay, so to kick this off, we're gonna make the pillows themselves. Uh, I'm cribbing this off some other tutorial I saw. Uh, I think it was an official one, uh, but I can't remember for sure. But basically what it is, is you create a pillow body uh, and then wrap a pillow case around it. And you end up with a really nice looking sort of natural pillow. So uh, let's give that a shot. So we're gonna make a pillow that's kind of rectangular in shape. So we'll do a 50 and a 30 maybe. Okay, there's, there's the front of the pillow. I'm going to um, say move this over a little bit. Oh, I should have created it closer to the origin. That's fine. Let me just pull it down to here. And then pull him down here. Just just for convenience. Anyway, copy and paste that, drag it over here. Now with these in the viewport, uh, I'm going to want to get them positioned so that when they sim, they'll sim nicely together. So I'll put that, you know, at the front behind the back. And now I just need to sew these edges up. Sewing edges, you want to be careful that you're getting straight lines in the viewport. Uh, you're not getting any crisscross action. This looks okay to me. So that's that's the basic structure of the inside of the pillow. Now we're gonna rotate it and sim it. Now that floats to the ground and collapses because there's nothing inside of it. To fix that, we have to add pressure. So we'll add a pressure of two. And then sometimes you kind of have to jostle the pillow before it figures out that it has pressure. All right. So I'll stop the sim. You can see now we have a pillow with some simulated pressure inside of it. Now we need to build the pillow case. The pillow case can be you know, created relatively quickly by grabbing the existing pillow meshes, copying them, drag them up. And then on these ones, that's too bad. I was hoping I, I could just reset the one I had selected. All right, drag this down below, this on top. And then we want to go ahead and change a few things about the pillowcase because we want the pillowcase to be a little bit larger than the pillow. So we're going to right click it and tell it we want to do an offset pattern outline. We're going to give it about four centimeters around the outside. And this corner style is fine. I'm going to say OK. So then it goes ahead and resizes the pillowcase. And it's janked up, but it's because we haven't hit the sim yet. There's one more thing we have to do here. Uh, and that's remove the pressure from the pillowcase pieces, because we don't want those applying pressure. And we hit sim again. And the pillowcase stitches and falls onto the uh, the pillow. Now, now you notice it collapsed. Well, it's because now it has extra weight on it. 
uh, it's going to need a little more pressure to maintain its internal shape. But there's the basic pillow setup. Uh, that pillow looks like a, a, you know, a case with something inside of it. Now we're not going to deal with the open end and all that. This is just a quickie little tutorial to show off the basics. But yeah, this is our pillow. Now if I grab this and rather grab everything, pull it up in the air and give it a twist, let's say like this and hit sim again, you know, it's going to fall in a different way and I can grab it and tug it around and you know, the insides stay, stay inside. And you can start to see the possibilities here in terms of making, say, a pile of pillows. So I, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more pillows, and then we'll come back once I've got that done. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created a couple more pillows, and we're going to sim them so they pile up in a nice pile. Uh, I tend to I, I tend to do this in stages. So I, I'm going to grab this top one and freeze it so it's not part of the simulation. And actually, let's um. Let's freeze this one too. Let's just get the one to fall down and look correct. This bottom one is fine, so he should be frozen as well. Because, well, no, because I want him to react with the pillows falling on him. So let's just go ahead and spacebar, get the get those two to fall together and look right. Okay, great, that looks fine. So kill the sim. Select the next pillow unfreeze it, maybe scoot it down a little bit, give it a, I don't know, a slight tilt, I'll drop him into place, pause the sim, grab this one, and unfreeze that one, pull it down so it's, where's that gonna hit? Kind of over here on top-ish. Pull this up, and hit simulate and let that fall into place. And if I let that continue on to its logical conclusion, you can see we have a pretty good looking pile of pillows. Now this would be a pain in the butt to have to retopo this manually. So we're gonna use Houdini for this job. Now most of what I know about Houdini I've learned from uh, watching Michael uh, Pavlovich, uh, I hope I didn't butcher that too badly. Uh, his tu his free tutorial series on Houdini was fantastic, and it showed me basically what I needed to get stuff to happen in Houdini for for game engines. What if I increase the pressure on that bottom one? Man? There we go. We get a little more fluid out of it. So getting something to look decent in Marvelous Designer is really just a matter of, of taking it in stages and doing it in steps. So I'm going to export this out to a high poly OBJ and uh, then we'll meet up in Houdini. So here we are in Houdini. Uh, this is the high poly mesh which is being loaded by this file node uh, right over here. This begins the small tree that I've constructed as the baseline number of elements I need to get a game dev prop through Houdini and out again. Uh, the really nice part about Houdini is that this tree doesn't change. So no matter what prop I'm doing, you know, I can change that top node to load a different mesh. It'll pull it in here and do the same process. You know, I could tweak a few knobs to get the exact result I want, but once that's done, it spits it out and it's, and it's, and it's ready to go. So we'll walk through this really quick. The process in Houdini is to load the mesh, then voxelize the mesh. Now voxelizing the mesh, you see the difference there? Let me get this uh, over here where it's not uh, behind my fat head. So that's the mesh that came in, and that's the voxels. You see how, how all these holes are kind of sealing up here and getting covered over with the uh, polygonal mesh. You could change the density of this you know, voxelization, but as long as you're getting uh, enough detail, then you're good to go. That That's turned our four pillows into one big mesh. Now this is not usable as a game res mesh, it's, it's too high poly. So that's where the poly reduce node comes in. So once you're happy with your voxelization, we jump down to the poly reduce node. Now it's exact, it's exactly what it sounds like. It will 
take the voxelization mesh and optimize it. Now there's, you know, there's, there's things over here we can tweak, you know, to change how much comes out and stuff. But uh, this seems fine to me. We're at 1900 primitives. That seems fine for our test here. You know, uh, depending on your game and your spec, you can tweak it further. This works for me. So after that, we have to throw it through the auto UV node. Now this is not going to be visible in the viewport and it's not really all that important to be honest. But, sorry, I can't seem to change my view right now. But uh, the auto UVs are just, uh, you know, they're based off of different planes or, or you can do different styles of unwrap, but we'll just leave it the way it is. And then the final step is you tell, you tell Houdini to spit out the OBJ file. So uh, it's done that now. <laughs> And I, I will jump over to Modo now and take a look at the results. Okay, so we're back in Modo, and I've imported the Houdini uh, meshes. Well, uh, the Marvelous Designer mesh. Here's our high poly. Looks lovely, uh, especially with that matte cap shader on there, looking good. Then we have our low poly mesh that Houdini spit out, and this will be uh, uh, the thing we're going to bake to. So uh, let me turn off my matte cap shader. You know, as much as I love it, we don't really need it in there. And I'll delete the texture that it sent in. Okay. So this low poly mesh. Just for a quick uh, uh, for a quick look, these are the UVs that uh, that Houdini generated for us automatically. Right. You can see they're not the greatest, but you can. I often use these you know, as a jumping off point. So say you wanted to remove the bottom of this mesh because you know, it's, uh, these will always be laying on the, you know, on the flat part. You'll never see the bottom, so why spend the polygons? Well, Houdini has auto-mapped you know, you know, the whole bottom section to one UV island, so you can use that selection there to quickly get where you want, and then you, know, you can customize the selection and delete the rest. Or even just use these you know, as a starting point. Be like, well, what are these two islands here? Okay, well, they can be mapped together. Then remap those. Uh, for our purposes, we're just going to uh, just roll with the Houdini unwrap. But just know that that auto unwrap has uses, uh, even if you don't intend to use it straight up the way it is. So in anticipation of getting this baked, I jumped ahead a little bit. Now, I gave the little poly a custom texture. I threw a texture on there that that will be the normal map. It's splooge right now. You can ignore it. And I gave it a cage that pushes it out past the high poly. So with those elements in place, let's go ahead and bake that normal map and see what we end up with. And since this whole mesh is... Uh, smooth as one it's you know one big smoothing group this this will probably just just work out nicely but we'll see hide the high poly kill the wireframe and there's our low poly stack of pillows that's lovely and baked nicely and more than good enough to be used you know, as a base for a you know for a game res asset so I've been totally in love with this workflow since I started using it and you know, I no longer really fear cloth or uh, stacks of organic things. It's just you, know, you throw it through Houdini and magic happens. So perhaps not the most uh, in-depth tutorial that we've done, but I'm hoping you know, that can open your eyes a little bit to the possibilities when you start looking you know, outside of the apps you use every day and start to learn new things and find ways to apply them to your daily life. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.